Welcome to our review on Group 7, the halogens. First thing then, where do we find the halogens on the periodic table? Now, what we'll actually find, they're in Group 7, which means we're going to the right-hand side this time. So what you'll actually find is that on the periodic tables they're going to give you in the exam, they're probably going to have a 17 at the top. But it is still Group 7, and they are the halogens there. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, those are the halogens. A key point to remember about how we find them, that we've got to remember when we're using our halogens in any kind of symbol equation, is that they go around as what's called a diatomic molecule. So that means that the atoms go around as a pair joined together. So when we're actually writing the symbol for any of the halogens, you must write the chemical formulae, so F, C, L, B, R, I, A, T, and then put the little subscript 2 on the right-hand side of it, because that tells us that there are two chlorines or two fluorines or two bromines joined together. When we think about some of the key things we need to know about the halogens, there are two shown in this table that you must learn. The first one is the state of matter at which they found at room temperature, and the second one is their colour. Now, what we can see in the table is that fluorine is a pale yellow gas, chlorine is a green gas, bromine is an orange liquid, iodine a grey solid, and astatine is a dark grey or black solid. And you can see the pictures of them at the bottom there, starting with fluorine on the far left, all the way through to astatine on the right. Now, one of the things that they could ask you to do is to predict the colour or state, or maybe both, of some of them from the table when they've deleted key bits. So they might, for example, ask you to predict the state and colour of fluorine. So we'd hopefully notice the patterns in our table and then be able to do that. So again, we need to know some of the typical properties of our halogens. First of all, when they're solid, they're actually brittle. So that means they break quite easily and they're poor electrical conductors. We also need to know a couple of those key trends or patterns as we go down the group. What we find, as we've already said, they go from a gas to a liquid to a solid. They get darker in colour the further down we go. Our melting and boiling points will increase and their density will also increase. One of the favourite questions that they put on about the different groups that we've looked at is they will give you certain key properties. Now, there will be some missing from the table or the graph that they give you. So I've given you an example here of the kind of question that we could see. So we've got our group seven elements and then we've got the melting points and the boiling points plotted as those bars. But as you can see, fluorine is missing its melting point and astatine is missing the boiling point. The one thing to bear in mind here is don't just think, oh, I'm just going to shove a number that's above that or below that just because that's what I know the trend to be. On the exam, they're actually a little bit more specific about the numbers they're looking for. So work out the differences between each one and then apply that difference to work out the missing one. You need to be quite accurate in that because otherwise you could very easily lose the mark just by being a little bit carefree and just putting down a number that you know is bigger than the one that they just gave you. If you're not accurate with it, you're not getting the marks. So we need to consider some of these reactions then. When group seven reacts with metals, they produce a salt. And one of the common reactions that you should have looked at is the one between sodium and chlorine. And what we end up making is sodium chloride or good old table salt. Now, when we're writing the reaction of our metal with our halogen, the key thing is in the endings that we're going to write down. That's the way people throw away the marks on this question. So our metal plus halogen makes the salt, which is a metal halide. So look at the endings I've put in red there in the middle. So sodium plus chlorine, so I-N-E, because it's the halogen on its own, makes sodium chloride, I-D-E, as the metal halide, the salt. So remember, halogen on its own, I-N-E, halogen joined to the metal, then that's our halide, and that is I-D-E at the end. Don't write sodium chlorine at the end because you will not get the marks. Okay, so I-N-E, halogen on its own, I-D-E, halogen joined to the metal. 
We also need to be able to do the balance symbol equation as well, which I've put at the bottom there for you. So M just stands for a metal, X is our halogen. So two of our metal plus our halogen, which remember goes around as that diatomic molecule, hence the X2, makes two MX. So if we change that now just to show you what it looks like with actual chemical symbols in there, we've got 2Na, which is our sodium, plus Cl2, chlorine, makes 2NaCl. Just like with our alkali metals, because the halogens are in a single group, then they've all got similar chemical properties. And the reason for that is that they've all got seven electrons in their outer shell. So just like with the alkali metals in group one, one electron in the outer shell, halogens are in group seven, seven electrons in their outer shell. So if the elements have the same number of electrons in their outer shell, they have similar chemical properties as a result. When they actually react, what they're going to do is they're going to gain one electron in order to make an ion that has a single negative charge. So at the bottom, I've given you this little ionic equation there. So what we can see is we start off with our halogen, X2, plus two electrons. Remember, the symbol for an electron is E minus. And that gives us two X minus because our halogen then has a negative charge, single negative, hence just the little minus sign. The last thing to consider with our halogens is how the reactivity changes as we go down the group. Now, what we see with the halogens is that as we go down the group, the reactivity decreases. So this is the opposite of what we saw with the alkali metals or our group one. Now, the reason behind this is very similar to what we saw with the alkali metals and why their reactivity increases as we go down. It's all down to the force of attraction between the nucleus and those outer shell electrons. If we're thinking about group seven, they've all got seven electrons in their outer shell, and therefore they're gonna to try to gain one more electron. So what we find is the further down the group we go, the more electron shells there are, so the outer shell is further from the nucleus. This means the force of attraction is going to be weaker and it makes it harder for it to gain that extra electron. That's why they get less reactive the further down the group we go. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can talk about where we find the halogens on the periodic table. You can recall their state and color. You can also talk about the trends as we go down the group and predict any missing values for boiling points and melting points when you're given some others. You should also be able to describe the reaction between halogens and metals, including writing both word and balance symbol equations for them, and talk about why their reactivity changes as we go down the group.